Welcome my friends, Seven Gray here. I hope you're all having a fabulous day out there. I've left Forest Grove. I've left my sister's house after one month of construction there and I am ecstatically happy that after 30 days of work in Build 2.0 I'm at the basic same stage as I was after 10 months of my first build. And I think for me that means that there's been a huge improvement in my skill level, my confidence, and my ability to figure things out and move forward in projects. There's been certainly some hurdles. I'm actually probably further ahead because I have insulation and electricity now. Anyway, things are going fantastic. Today, I've traveled up to Mount Vernon, which is in Northern Washington, almost to the Canadian border. And I'm gonna be meeting with one of my subscribers, Terry, who has helped out a couple other YouTube creators on their channels with electric wiring issues and as you know in past episodes which I'll link above I've been having some wacky crazy problems with my speedometer and my oil pressure gauge so Terry has kindly offered and volunteered his assistance to try to troubleshoot and help me with a few of these electrical issues and maybe a few other things that I have going on so I'm meeting him today in the parking lot of Home Depot so that we can figure this out I've arrived at Terry's rig here in Mount Vernon and we have begun working on the step van. So first thing that uh, Terry's done is opened up the hood here. We're trying to trace down from the battery to where it connects under the hood looking for corrosion points. And Terry's theory at least to start out with is looking for drops in voltage uh, due to corrosion and things like that. So we know that there's a, a voltage drop somewhere between the batteries, which are running around um, 13 volts, something like that, high 12s. And then at the dash, we're getting about 11.8, which Terry thinks is probably a little bit too low and probably causing the, the gauges to act in a wacky way. Yeah, everything he said, that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're cleaning these contacts. We're cleaning these poor connections that uh, we suspect are causing the problem and as we're trying to take these uh, nuts apart that connect the wires some of the studs that the nuts uh, attached to are spinning so we're having issues but uh, we're going to press on and see what we can do to fix it it may be that we have to replace all these little they're like little breakers thermal breakers that are in line with the wire coming into the fuse panel so my step van has uh, two relays. There's a starter relay actually on the starter itself and this unit here on the dash which is a standard Ford auto relay and this we replaced with Daniel down in Oceanside in California about two or three months ago. And so this is a new unit here and it wires over to what Terry's working on now which is sort of a bus bar that is off to the side and this is mounted on the top area back here on the wall and you can behind. see this big wire comes from battery power comes over here and feeds this bus bar and then it taps off and feeds circuits with these little breaker protections so we're starting here because there's tons of corrosion on this and trying to clean up these connections and so what Terry's doing right now is what I've been doing for about the last five or ten minutes until Terry reminded me I need to be doing some videos so we're taking a wire brush and cleaning all of these ring connections here until they're all nice and shiny and new. So that's my task for the day, um, at least at this point, while Terry is going uh, to work on this other part trying to disassemble it. But it is so corroded that we're starting to um, have damage to the posts and uh, the nuts are not spinning off the way they should. So it's uh, a bit of a challenge for us. And one thing, a safety thing that you might want to show them is there's a, a battery disconnect switch inside uh, that Seven told me about that I didn't know he had. And basically that's everything we're doing now. There's no hot battery here. So um, we can't short anything out and cause a fire or burn something up. Definitely you don't want to be doing this unless you've disconnected the uh, terminals off of the battery or somehow disconnected live power to this. You don't want to be doing that. I'm sort of lucky in this particular step van that I have, somebody, a previous owner, has established a cutoff, master cutoff switch right at the batteries. I'll show you that. Over here is my master cutoff switch. So it's right now, it's in the off position. 
and that disconnects the negative terminal on the batteries here. So right here you can see that switch down there connects directly into here so that you can easily turn off uh, all the power to the step in. Anyway, I gotta go back to Alpine Terrier. Terry and I just made a run to the auto parts store. These are called circuit breakers, and so we purchased five of these to replace the ones that are on the step van right now. So we have 250 amp, 140 amp, and 230 amps. So we're gonna go through and carefully label all of the wire connectors, one through five, and each of the amperages to make sure we get everything put back together correct. I'm going to let Terry explain a little bit of how these breakers work and how they connect because he's the expert and he was just explaining it to me and I think he can do a way better job than I can. Basically all these are is they're a little breaker and we open one up to show you, you know, kind of sort of by accident. And, and what happens is um, power goes through this, this, uh, this bus from the battery and then it comes through these contacts and goes out the other wire connect the other terminal and connects to that wire but if it gets hot then they open up and if you look closely I don't know how well you can zoom in there but you can see these are just these are just contacts here and they get arced and uh, pitted and they have poor connection and so the solution here is just to replace all of them and it was kind of coming apart and breaking anyway so I'm glad that we were able to find those so our plan now is to take this all apart and reuse this uh, bus bar and put it all back together and we're going to label all these wires so we don't get confused and then mount it back over here where it was on the on the side of the bulkhead here what we've done is we've gone into the service manual which is on my computer i did a snapshot for the auto parts store so anyway the the diagrams here that lists exactly the amperages and the positions we have the new circuit breakers down here we've labeled these one through five and we have the amperage here 50 50 40 30 30 and then I've gone in and I've made a tape label and this is for position number five and it's 30 amp and I'm putting each of these onto a wire that's underneath the hood over there. I've already put in one through four so this will be the last one that I've got to put onto the cable and then we should be good for pulling everything apart. So I just pull off a piece like this that's extra long and I've got to find cable number five which is this one that's disconnected here and I just sort of put it in the middle and there you go number five 30 amp we took a quick break for lunch and it is raining now we've come back we were waiting for some jb welds to dry um, we now have all of those little breakers attached um, to a bar type bracket thing anyway we've already pulled it all back in i keep forgetting to pull up the camera and then terry's like get out your camera show them what you're doing i'm like oh yeah i keep forgetting so anyway, we have it all back installed and put back together. Terry was showing me in here how to attach all these and we went back to the numbers. I had them numbered one through five and I attached them to the correct spot. Terry asked me to do that. And then we attached the power here on this very end uh, to this uh, sort of brass bar here on the bottom. And I think everything's done. Terry says, let's do a test. Okay, we have the panel pulled apart here. I'm going to flip it down so I can see the oil pressure gauge. So I'm going to watch the oil pressure gauge and see what it does when I get the vehicle started. So I turned it over. We have power. That's a good sign. And now I'm going to start it and see what happens here with the oil pressure gauge. <laughs> So we have to look at what's happening with the oil pressure gauge yep. and maybe the speedometer. So it looks like we have a bit more testing to do. Um, I think what we did is helpful in preventing other problems and it may, um, other stuff might start working. Who knows? I have a number of other little uh, buggy, strange electric issues going on. So maybe that will have solved some of those. It's about seven o'clock at night. Perfect time. I love the number seven. And we are having a wrap up. Uh, we finished for the day. Um, how did it go? Well, I think it went pretty good. Um, we found some problems. We fixed some problems. We didn't get to fix everything, mm -hmm. but um, I'm pretty sure that the problem is uh, in the gauge itself for the for the oil unit sending unit or the oil uh, gauge itself mm -hmm. problem. Um, and it could be the speedometer or the sending unit. I suspect the sending unit for the speedometer. But we did everything we could to verify that the wires were good and spray cleaned the contacts mm -hmm. uh, on the connection points for the 
module plugs, took those apart and cleaned them. Um, we didn't fix the horn and we didn't wire in something for your um, shunt thing mm -hmm. that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But we made pretty good progress and we, we found a, a real problem that we repaired. Mm -hmm. So there was some success, but not total success. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow's another day. Yep. All right, that's all I have for this episode. Thank you for watching. Savor the moment. See you next episode.